those shots going to be Just barely. Might be a little bit louder, but. Um, kicking us off tonight, uh, Dr. Ann Andrews from Psychiatry and Biobehavioral Sciences, um, the Hatto Center for Neuropharmacology, the Semmel Institute member, and a member of the California Nanosystems Institute. Well, I'm really excited to see this uh, fairly large crowd here today for what I think is going to be a, a wonderful symposium and workshop tomorrow. Um, I really had a lot of fun uh, reading uh, about what we're going to try to accomplish here on the website and, and was introduced to a fair number of new terms myself. Um, I wanted to start by just passing on a warm welcome and hello to you from uh, the, the Institute Director here at CNSI, Paul Weiss. Um, he's actually in Hong Kong right now and, and couldn't make it to the symposium, but he wanted to send his greetings and uh, to wish us all a, a very instructive time. Um, I, I just wanted to maybe kick things off by, by telling two very short stories as I tried to learn myself about what outlaw biology maybe encompasses. And I guess we're going to learn about outlaws, hackers, and uh, Victorian gentlemen scientists. So I guess I've always considered myself a bit of an outlaw in this field. I got into biology about 20 years ago, but I come from uh, a chemistry background. So when I first started studying the brain chemistry associated with psychiatric disorders, um, I was viewed with quite a bit of suspicion by biologists and psychiatrists really coming from the mainstream areas of science that are involved in this field. Um, and I found over the years that I was an outlaw really in two ways. Um, the biologists always looked at me with suspicious, suspicion and thought I was a chemist and not a real biologist. And as I got more deep into my area of study, um, my chemistry community started to look at me as an outlaw as well. And they started to say, well, you're not really a chemist anymore, you're a biologist. Um, so I think uh, really when we think about biology and outlaws, um, in addition to people that are really outside of the biological community and outside of the scientific community, uh, we also now have even more and more, more scientists who, who don't really come from traditional biological backgrounds, but who are involved in, in science having to do with biology. And that's one of the areas that's really strongly supported here at CNSI. And I'm going to give my hand signal here. Um, the second example I wanted to give that really came to mind to me when I was thinking about, about outlaw biology and, and thinking now about hackers um, is, is actually my middle son. Um, and he participated in this organization, International Genetically Engineered Machine Competition, for a number of years, um, late in high school and then early when he was an undergraduate at Penn State. Um, and this is a really interesting program. I put the website up here. Um, it involves students, and their goals are to try to use genetics to engineer uh, organisms to do things that they don't normally do. And I believe that falls under our category of hackers. And they have a lot of fun doing this. Um, and in fact, Luke, Luke's team won an award uh, the year that they participated in this competition. And they engineered uh, bacteria to have a relay race and to pass things from one bacteria to another. So, so you might have some fun looking at this. Um, and, and apparently, we can make bacteria and viruses to do all kinds of things that, that we wouldn't expect. So um, I, I'll now turn the program over to our panel. I'm going to really enjoy enjoy hearing about uh, what everyone has to say today, um, and I encourage everyone to, to really participate, ask all the crazy questions when we come to that point. Um, nothing, I think, is, is out of bounds in this type of symposium. Thank you very much.